So here are all of the major Western releases in America between 1960 and today. There are a lot of factors that led to this decline in the mid-1990s, but I think that none is greater than the release and immediate success of Clint Eastwood's Unforgiven just a few years earlier. And perhaps no other film is more of a Clint Eastwood film than Unforgiven. Like much of his work, he produced, directed, and starred in the film, but it also feels like the accumulation of his work up to the film's release. And that's because Unforgiven is a deconstruction of the typical Western, the typical Western which Eastwood helped to define and made most of his career off of, at least in the early days. His career took off with his work in Leone's Dollar Trilogy and shows like Rawhide, but aside from its location, Unforgiven couldn't be any more different than Rawhide. In Unforgiven, Eastwood's will money is a shell of his former self. He is filled with regret over his actions in his younger years. I thought maybe you were someone come to kill me for something I'd done in the old days. Actions which, by the way, seem very similar to the many characters Eastwood played earlier in his career. I've killed women and children. Killed just about everything that walks or crawled at one time or another. The nonchalant attitude over killing is instead replaced with regret, as he comes to value human life. In many ways, Unforgiven is a continuation of the ideas put forward in his earlier films. It asks the question, what happens when this character looks back on his life and he regrets it? And that's where the film begins, with Will burying his life, trying to move on with his life. The violence that defined his younger self is now something that he regrets and looks back on with shame. Yet, it isn't good enough for him to simply leave his old life behind, to stop and to try and move on. He tried that and found it unfulfilling. He needs to find a way to make up for his past actions, to bring good to the world, to make up for all the bad that he brought to it earlier. So he sets out to avenge a prostitute who had her face cut up by a group of thugs. And perhaps because violence is all that he knows, violence becomes his way of redeeming his former violent life. Now this brings up several moral questions on its own, most notably, can good come from violence? And the film's answer is no. All the violence in the film is painted in a very negative light. From the opening rape and attack on the prostitute, which sets everything into motion, to the Schofield kid, someone who is obsessed with stories of the Old West and wants to live a life where he is a ruthless gunslinger until he is forced to do just that. He kills one of the rapists and cannot cope with the aftermath of the murder. I killed the hell out of him, didn't I? Meanwhile, after Ned is murdered by Little Bill, Will kills Little Bill, and the result is nothing. Ned is still dead and will solve nothing, yet he went back to his violent ways. There'll be a bit more on this later. The way that Eastwood chooses to show this violence is in three stages. First is the build-up, and this consists of everything that led to the violence itself. What motivated characters, the decisions they made that led to this act, as well as time for suspense and build-up before the pull of the trigger or whatever the act itself is. The next stage and the shortest stage is the act itself, whatever form it comes in, be it a shootout or just a struggle. And the final stage is the reflection on the act. How do characters cope with the violence with which they just cause? This is the most interesting aspect and the aspect to which the film gives the most attention. The result is almost always more violence, creating a loop with nothing but negative results and even more violence. This is how it is painted to the audience and this is how Will perceives it. He hates who he was and tries as he might to change it and to live a better life. He can't escape his past. He also doesn't try to hide from it. He knows exactly who he was and what he did. He knows the perception that others have of him and he just embraces it. And he might embrace it too much because it's clear that he is willing to go back to violence. Every stereotype about Western heroes is turned on its head. Everything that was historically glamorized in the Western genre is the exact opposite. The protagonist is weak while the antagonists take on a role that heroes used to. I didn't know who the hero was until well into the picture because I thought it was the character Gene Hackman played of Little Bill. I thought he was the hero until all of a sudden he started doing kind of wild things. The antagonists aren't archetypically bad people. They're far from morally strong, but we understand from where they're coming. It paints a bleak and drab moral picture where nobody is right and very few people are totally wrong. We understand the actions put forth by most of the characters. But, but, but what I liked about the story is that the characters all had a point of view. And even though he is, was the villain in the piece, he had a point of view. He thought he was right and um, uh, doing the right thing. 
In addition to trying to deconstruct the characters, Eastwood also deconstructs imagery. The heroic cowboy on a horse is painted as a joke. The sharpshooting gunman Not quite. Everything that he'd been working to repress in his time off is exactly what he needs to call on to do his quest. In the end, he does what he set out to do. He avenged the woman, but at a significant cost. He killed again, he went back to drinking, and let his dark nature roam free. After all of the redemption that he sought throughout the entire film, he remained unforgiven. Now the question becomes, how do other filmmakers make a western after this? You can't go back to the former glamorization that violence existed beforehand, but it's also hard to mimic this because of how well Unforgiven tackled this issue. In recent years, both styles have seen a reemergence, but it took decades. It's remarkable when one film changes an entire genre, and Unforgiven did that better than any film in the history of cinema. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed. As far as I'm concerned, nothing goes better with movies than popcorn, and a great company called Snack Time Express reached out to me and offered me a free sample of popcorn. I've been nibbling on these for the past week or so, absolutely loving them, and they actually gave me a discount code, so if you're interested in some gourmet popcorn, definitely check out the link in the description and get yourself some popcorn. It's a product that I swear by, it tastes delicious, and if you're interested, definitely check them out. I think that Unforgiven was a turning point not just for the Western genre, but also for Eastwood's career as a whole. He made a big shift following this film, that's something I explored in my video on Million Dollar Baby and Gran Torino. There's a link on screen, so if you're interested, check that out, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.